primary focus is mountain lions, and that's kind of what I'll be talking about tonight. And um, my research is, is in uh, conjunction with my former advisor, David Hansen, and so what I'm representing tonight is actually a collaborative work between um, Grand Canyon and some of the other study areas that I'll actually be showing you. And so just a little background. Um, in 2003, two mountain lion studies got started, one in Grand Canyon, one around Flagstaff, um, the area monuments and such. And um, I came to Grand Canyon in 2008, and one of the first things I did, hey Judy, <laughs> is, um, is kind of integrate the data. Um, instead of having a Grand Canyon project, instead of having a um, Flagstaff area project, we kind of um, integrated them, created, you know, increased our sample size, increased our landscape that we're looking at cougars on and such. And so far, we've really, um, we worked primarily at Grand Canyon, Flagstaff Area Monuments, which includes uh, Wapaki National Monuments, Walnut Canyon, and Sunset Crater. Um, we worked up at Zion Capitol Reef, and our newest adventure, which is super exciting and a bit odd, is working on the Nevada test site, which is just north of um, Vegas. And it's the Department of Energy out there in conjunction with also the Department of Defense. And it's right next to Area 51. So I kind of call it Captain Bizarro World out there. Because it really is. I mean, but one good thing about it is 1,800 square miles of virtually protected area. I and mean, there's no hunting allowed. There's virtually no people except for the war games that play out there and the, and the bombs that explode now and again. But it's, in a weird way, it's a really a pristine habitat. They have pinion juniper on these mesas that go up to almost 18,000, 18, excuse me, 8,000 feet. And it's so super pristine, and what we're going to actually get to see is how cougars are really interacting in a natural setting without the impacts of hunting and without the impacts of people for the most part. So that's kind of our newest adventure. And so just a little background about um, mountain lions. Um, so around 1500, this is um, the range. And so they virtually um, encompass all of North, of North America and actually extend all the way down virtually to the tip of South America as well. By 1970s, this is kind of what it looked like. The range had really... That's okay. The range had really decreased, and so basically right now, it's about uh, the Rocky Mountains into the west. And then, this is the present range. So it's about the same as 1970, but you're starting to see these pockets right in here where um, they're actually um, expanding. And you guys have probably read the news and such about cougars showing up in Kansas and some showing up in, in Missouri and such. And so they're actually starting to actually move back east a little bit. And it's not, I mean, if you're a cat, that's a great place to be because you look at white-tailed deer and they're just everywhere. They're out of control. So it's like a smorgasbord out there for them. But really, I mean, will humans allow that to happen? That's really the big question. And we really don't know at this point, but they're at least they're trying to expand back to their natural range. Oops. Let's see. Uh oh. this area right through here. And so just another look of what I was just discussing. This is basically Cuban confirmation from about the past 20, 30 years or so, or 20 years. And the blue dots pretty much represent confirmed sightings, um, DNA evidence, um, photographs and such. The red dots are, well, maybe we got a report there, but we're really not sure. But so they are trying to actually expand and come back. Um, but again, this is kind of the area that we're looking at here, the circle. Right here is uh, Grand Canyon National Park, and a lot of the, what I'll be talking about today um, will be about Grand Canyon National Park. But the Colorado Plateau, as a region, is critically important for understanding mountain lion ecology, because we really 
don't know a whole lot about what's going on out there um, for the most part. Um, so there's, re there's research projects going on in, in Arizona. There's also some going on in, uh, around Logan, Utah, and then up in Montrose, um, Colorado with Ken Logan up there. He did a big study um, in New Mexico as well. So they're starting to come on board. We're starting to get more research going on in the Colorado Plateau. And so this is, let's see, our study areas that we've looked at so far. And so we've had three cats collared in Capitol Reef. Had six cats collared around Zion, 21 adults collared in Grand Canyon, and about 16 in Flagstaff. And right here, and you can kind of see these areas where you haven't had cats, right through here and right through here. And so the idea is to kind of fill in those gaps a little bit. So we plan on having about six more captures up here on the Arizona Strip, and we're going to try to do that in conjunction with Arizona Game and Fish. Um, I plan on getting two captures right on the North Rim and captures actually in the canyon proper as well. And um, so we're really trying to fill in the gaps and really just make this a landscape scale approach to study of mountains on the Colorado Plateau. And so if you look at Grand Canyon Habitat, you're like, wow, it's huge, you know? I mean, there's plenty of room for cats to run around. You know, we have, they have these awesome steep drainages here, miles and miles of pinion forest or ponderosa forest around the north around mixed conifer forest. But the reality is, is even a park the size of Grand Canyon, and there's other parks and monuments and protected areas all over the Colorado Plateau, even though we have these protected areas, it's really not enough habitat to um, house a large um, population of mountain lions. And so as a result, they're having to use a lot of land that's outside of the protected areas. And these are just, it's kind of a, a mash of home ranges right here. But this is Grand Canyon National Park right through here. And this is the boundary right through here. So you can see there's not a whole lot of territory from the rim basically to the boundary. And, and the majority of these home ranges encompass, at least on some level, areas outside the park. And we've only had one cat out of 21 that have been uh, tracked around Grand Canyon that have actually had her sole home range inside of Grand Canyon National Park. And the reason for that is she was running around here and she just decided to book it to the north room. And so she actually is staying inside the park proper itself. And I'll show you um, a cool slide on that a little bit later on. And again, just another look here. These are all the locations of all the cats that have been collared. And again, the boundaries, you know, roughly right in through here. So you're seeing a lot of activity out on the Forest Service land, some over here on Havasupai land. Um, we haven't had any go you know, as far as the Wallapai, but um, I'm sure they're using the Wallapai as well. And all these red dots just represent the captures that have occurred since 2003. Oh, and so right there is Grand Canyon Village, and you actually see a dearth of points. Basically, you don't see any GPS location points. And essentially, that's because of us. You know, we're there, that's where the human infrastructure is and such. And so these cats actually do a really good job of avoiding people, you know? That's not to say that they don't sometimes move through the village, because they do. They're usually on the outskirts of, uh, of the village. So these cats are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So avoiding us and um, focusing on their prey. And so just some of our objectives that we want to look at, we want to look at habitat selection. Um, where these cats are running, what kind of habitat they're using uh, seasonally, and, um, and, uh, and prey selection and such. And we also want to look at demography. Um, cute little kid right there. And um, so we want to look at survival rates, mortality causes, um, males and females, how many kittens that the females are having and such. As I mentioned, we want to look at predation rates and prey composition. Behavior near people, kind of what I just showed you, they're doing a really good job relatively of avoiding us. However, that's not always the case. Around Flagstaff, um, they actually tend to use the, uh, you know, Flagstaff is more of an urban interface, wildlands urban interface, and not as nearly as isolated as Grand Canyon. So they're actually using some of the, the uh, 
the, the interface that kind of runs between residential areas and say like Mount Eldon and such. We've actually had two that have been running around.